Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. I've been working a lot with Spark Notebooks in Azure Synapse, and I want to show how we schedule those. Um, so it's it's not too complicated. If you've worked with Synapse pipelines, it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, but there's a couple of tips I'll give along the way, and just make sure if you're new to Azure Synapse Spark, if you're used to something like Databricks or or other ways of running Spark, that you know how to do this within Azure Synapse. Let's dive right in. So here I am in the Synapse Studio, just home screen once I've logged in. And usually what you'll be doing is you'll be in the develop section and you can uh, make some changes there. So in this case, I've got my basic data lake load Spark notebook. And if you wanna know more about the code and things involved here, I have some prior videos about uh, using Azure Synapse Spark with uh, a few different languages that it, that it works with. Um, but for this case, we really just wanna know how do we schedule this thing? So one quick piece is that if you needed uh, to parameterize this for different environments you're going to run in, um, do note that you can add a cell and click on the toggle parameter cell to make sure that you can pass in a new value for location in this case. Um, so that, that's something you may want to set up in advance of trying to schedule these if you're going to be deploying the same code to different environments. So there's no like job scheduler specific for Spark. Really what you do is you add it as a step in a Synapse pipeline. And so it could be the only step. It's really not too crazy. Um, one way to do that is to click on this button in the top right and choose that you want to create a new pipeline. So it gets me started with a notebook activity. Where it got that from is really just right here. If you open up a brand new Synapse pipeline, uh, which you find down in this pipeline uh, hub, the integrate hub, then you can choose a lot of different activities, but uh, a few of them are related to uh, Spark. The notebook and the Spark job definition are two different ways to run Spark code on Azure Synapse pools from pipelines, which means we can then schedule those. So just so you can see what's going on here, if we keep it as pipeline one, since there's not a whole lot to do, I can add parameters and things at the top level, which uh, actually I probably would do that. I'd probably have a location parameter in my pipeline that I can pass in, and maybe I'll just default that to the same value that my notebook defaults to. And then uh, there's some settings and things you can do. A lot of times I don't really need to change those myself. Once I click on the notebook that's been that's been set up, the Spark notebook that it's trying to run, I can go into settings, uh, make sure I've selected my notebook. They did it for me because I started from the notebook and clicked the add pipeline. Uh, I could always change this though. And then uh, I can add parameters. So my parameter name was location. I can set that up right here. And you can do add dynamic content to choose a parameter that you pass into the pipeline. So either I could type a value that's always going to be the case for this pipeline, or I could set it up to where I can pass a parameter into my pipeline, set it that way. And then this is a string, so let me get that set correctly. Now that I've got this set up, really the, the next step, if I don't want to add any additional task, is to add a trigger. So if I go to the add trigger, I can either run it right now, which a lot of times I'll do during development, but if we're trying to schedule this thing daily, let's say we'll go to new or edit, I can choose some existing triggers or I can create a brand new one. Let's go through that process super quick here. So trigger one, we will keep it as a schedule, though do note you could do a tumbling window instead of a set time each day. You could do storage events, so as files are coming in, it could trigger pipeline. And you can do custom events, which will be some kind of event grid uh, subscription that will trigger this. I can choose my time zone, so take note of that. I can choose exact uh, date and time of day I want this to run. So let's run it uh, pretty close to midnight here of the following day, and we'll just leave that as is to keep moving. And then finally for recurrence, I probably wanna do day, at least that's a pretty common one for me. And you can actually set it for multiple times throughout the day, but let's just say one, once a day, running at this 2358 time. Uh, and here's where I can kind of look for any other settings that I care about. Once I hit okay, uh, it will give me a chance to say what I want the parameter to be. And since I'm scheduling this, I would need to set this for, you know, each time it runs, this is what I want to use. So uh, in this case, you know, I'm probably doing this in dev, so I would go with dev. Then when I do some kind of deployment to another environment, I might have a UAT value, which tells me some information that I'm going to assume my notebook will use to uh, get data from a different location or something like that. Once that's done, you do need to publish this. I'm not in repository mode. I'm just using a basic Synapse workspace here. You can publish this. And your trigger will be out there, uh, toggled on, ready to go. Your pipeline will be out there, ready to go. Uh, and I think the way I said it, it's gonna run sometime tomorrow, um, towards the end of the day tomorrow. 
The other thing I want to show is that you can, uh, obviously you can add more notebooks and it looks really similar to what we just did. So let's just pick one. Uh, let's do data lake load.net, similar stuff, no parameters, I don't believe. And then I can have some dependent steps. And so a lot of times I try to do most of this in Spark notebooks and I might have uh, some initial steps and then a final step. Another thing I'll show you though, is that we could call a different pipeline. So we can call a different pipeline with the execute pipeline task. So this is a nice way to have maybe several different notebooks or maybe some other things that run together, package those up as a pipeline and then call it after the initial steps have completed. So if I want to make this execute pipeline dependent on the success of the first two notebooks, I would just drag like this and I'm ready to go. One other piece that's probably worth showing because I, I have done it in some of my demos, I think it's good to know exists, is that if I wanted to, instead of using Spark for every step along the way, if I wanted to move data from my data lake using Azure Synapse uh, with serverless SQL, which means I can write just T SQL code, that's gonna be a little bit different than Spark and not have to spin up a pool that can pay for how much data I'm, I'm querying using the serverless SQL uh, pricing. Uh, I could set that up as a copy data task. The way I would do that is I'd create a source that is Azure SQL or, uh, or SQL Server. In this case, I think I used Azure SQL, so that's the experience I've got with it. And when I'm setting that up, instead of having an actual Azure SQL database name, I just grab the on-demand uh, host, the on-demand endpoint that you can see when you're looking at your Synapse workspace. I also need to pick a database name. So in this case, demo is a database that exists and has data in it. And then I uh, managed identity authentication is nice. You just have to go set the correct uh, permissions for your managed identity. Otherwise you could um, have a SQL user or go the service principal route. So once that's done, what this is enabling me to do is use the copy activity to write a custom query that's uh, maybe it's saved in a serverless SQL script, but I would just paste that code right into here. I could parameterize that by using this add dynamic content option if I wanna get a little more advanced. And then uh, I would set some sort of sync. This is you know beyond the scope of what I wanna cover right now. Look at anything about Synapse pipelines, you'll learn about sources and syncs. And uh, I keep my mappings light. I let it infer the mappings typically that way. I don't have a bunch of extra metadata in the JSON. Uh, if I'm doing CI, CD and wanna look at the code, it's nice to not have 50 <laughs> entries for each mapping if it's just a straight uh, column to column mapping. So this is basically saying, now I can run a notebook first. Once that's done, kick off serverless SQL to save the data in another location uh, and off we go. In addition, if I was trying to load to dedicated pool, this Synapse SQL pool stored procedure could be useful where you Maybe make that the last step. Once you're done with the serverless copy, you uh, have a store procedure that's going to go uh, do the processing that it needs to do on a dedicated SQL instance. So that's kind of the, the overview with a little bonus stuff about running serverless SQL of how we get our Spark notebook scheduled, uh, set them up as triggers. And I probably should show you that once we've created those triggers, um, they'll show up in my manage hub within Synapse. So I can see the trigger, I can look at it, and if I go click on this little code section, I can see which pipelines are run via this trigger. Uh, the other thing that's really important, and I probably don't have a lot of history here, is that this monitor section, there's a whole trigger runs and pipeline runs piece. So this is how I would keep an eye on whether or not my jobs are working and how long they take. I can also go look at my Spark application, and the hard part about this is that some of it will have been scheduled and some of it will have been notebooks I was running on my own. And so it's a little bit trickier to get to the right thing. Uh, but if you're getting errors in the Spark job and it's not very clear from the pipeline run, come in here and actually look at the Spark application logs. It takes a little getting used to if you're new to it, but it's an important skill to have if you're going to work with Apache Spark regularly. So there we go. That's how we run Apache Spark notebooks using Synapse uh, from a pipeline so that we can schedule it and so that we can set up dependencies and things like that, which are pretty common in data engineering jobs. Hopefully that helped you out a lot. If you're interested in data engineering, interested in Azure Synapse, please subscribe to this channel and check out dustinvanoy.com for more content. See you next time.